Yay, oh, this is great, wow. A glitchy transition. I'm going to show you how you can do this in a looping way or just as one transition. You're going to need three things. You need some sort of video editing software that can output in AVI format and two other tools that are free called AVI Demux and Virtual Dub. And with Virtual Dub, you got to make sure you get the FFD Show compression codec, which is really annoying to get. It's kind of the hardest part of this whole thing because there's a million thousand versions of this to dig through and you need the exact one for your operating system so just scroll through this list or whatever and just find the right one for you and that's it and you're ready to go get some footage don't steal it shoot some footage with uh, some motion in it this is my brother's cat messing around with some CDs and I put a flashlight on him to make him purple mark off the clip you want to use and render out an AVI I'm calling this 000, zero, zero. I'm going to throw this down on the desktop because we're going to need a whole bunch of these and if we get disorganized it could fuck everything up so I'll lay it out as clearly as I can. So 000 is our clean untainted AVI straight out of our editor. We're going to drop this into Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub is really cool. It was made by Avery Lee to capture and encode anime VHS tapes but it's expanded its capabilities a lot since the uh, 90s and it's really streamlined for processing AVIs which is what we want to do. Press Control P to bring up your compression options. You should see an option for FFD Show Video if you installed the right codec. Select that and check the Force Keyframes box. And for frames, just mash in a really big number. And if it's greater than the number of frames in your whole clip, then you can't go wrong. So here's 567. That means that after the initial keyframe at the start of your video, no more are going to be set. You'll see what this means a bit later and then press F7 to save as AVI and call this 000VD1 to really clearly show that this is the 000 clip that's been put through Virtual Dub one time. And if something goes wrong, which has never happened to me, you can just call that 000VD2. Drag 000VD1 into AVI Demux or Avid Demix or Avid Emu X. Avid Emu X is a transcoding and editing utility written in 2001 by Mean, who got annoyed by low audio on a video file and studied AVI hex code and made a program so we could extract that and amplify it. And the program just evolved a lot. But what we want it for is this frame type indicator down here because there's a really specific frame we've got to delete. So we've got 000VD1 here in our timeline already. What we're going to do is we're going to drag it in from the desktop again so it's in there twice. If you don't want to make a loop, uh, don't do this. Just use whatever the next clip that you're transitioning to, but we're making a loop, so we need the duplicate. These videos are made of iframes and P frames, and you can just think of an iframe as a complete picture and a P frame, which is a predictive frame, that references that image and applies motion vectors to it in segments called macro blocks, which will move around the screen. And this just saves a lot of data in a video file just so every single frame doesn't need to be a complete image. when you can just move around blocks from a previous frame. Now because of what we did with Virtual Dub, compressing it with FFD Show, all of the iframes are gone except for the first one. Scrub through to the middle of the timeline. Remember we've got 000VD1 in here twice. The frame we want is the iframe right at the start of the second 0VD1 clip. And press this little A, then the right arrow, and then this little B to select it, and press your delete key. Now all of these P-frames were relying on that iframe for a reference and it's gone and that's the key to this effect so we're gonna save it as a new video called 0AVX1 and Avidemix is gonna warn us that the cut points aren't on keyframes which is going to corrupt them which is what we want so just say yes. Gonna drag it over here so we can see how far we've come from the first render and now we can have a look let's drop it back into After Effects. And at the cut point between our two clips, we see this corruption where the P frame motion vectors meant to reference the I frame at the beginning of the video are hitting macro blocks that are way out of their position because they're from a much later frame. And you get all this cool stuff. And if all you need to do is transition one time, then you're ready to go. But I want to cover just how to do a loop as well. So to do that, we need to render out the second cycle here. So just mark it with your in and out points. The first frame here where we see the blocks going wrong means that's the second cycle starting. So we're going to render just this part also as AVI and we're going to call it B. 
Now we need another copy of the zero AVX1 footage again, but for simplicity's sake, let's just render it from the same timeline here, just the whole thing, and call it A. So to reiterate, clip A has the first cycle, which was clean, and the second cycle, which we corrupted, just like zero AVX1, but it's called A. Now on the desktop, move A and B over here so we can see what we're doing a little better. And we're going to compress these again because they've been in After Effects and they're full of keyframes. So quickly run these through Virtual Dub. Just like before, press Control P for compression and use FFD Show codec. Force keyframes every 10 million or whatever, it doesn't matter. And press F7 to save. This is called AVD1. So we know it's shot A that's been through Virtual Dub. And then the same treatment for shot B. Drop shot AVD1 into Avidemix, then drag in BVD1, so B is at the end of the timeline. Scrub through two thirds of the way to the iframe that marks the beginning of BVD1, and delete it with this AB thing just like last time. Then I save this as AB AVX1 because it combines shot A and B using AVI Demux. Here's our new AVI, of which we have eight, and now they're nice and organized, so we can bring this back into After Effects and have a look at it. What we're looking for for a loop is the corrupted cut between clips A and B, which is going to be the first frame of cycle B that now has matching corruption at the beginning and at the end. So instead of the cat like glitchily emerging from clean footage, he's emerging from corrupted footage. And we have our loop. And look at him go. This is great. We are done.